dinosaur bones on the moon. I'm not bullshitting you guys. Hold on tight because today is going to be amazing. Stay tuned till the end and if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks guys and welcome. There are most likely fragments of dinosaur bones on the moon. That's pretty amazing when you consider that the moon is on average 384,000 kilometers from Earth, and yet from what we know, the dinosaurs had no space program. But I once asked the AI to spit out a picture of a dinosaur astronaut, and this is what it came up with. I wonder what the dinosaur Neil Armstrong's first words on the moon would have been, let me know your suggestions in the comments. I'm looking forward to your creative ideas. Okay, so how did these prehistoric lizards manage to get to the moon? First, a few basic facts about the dinos. They first appeared on the evolutionary stage 230 million years ago and then dominated the Earth until about 66 million years ago when mammals finally took over. In other words, our great 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 grandparents. Dinosaurs were part of the reptiles even if they cannot be compared with today's reptiles and Contrary to popular belief, they did not become completely extinct. Today's birds, for example, emerge from the group of dinosaurs and they make up a third of all land creatures. So it's fair to say that dinosaurs are everywhere you look. And the circle of life was already sung about in The Lion King, so today we're making chicken nuggets in dinosaur form from the descendants of dinosaurs. Absolutely sick. Dinosaurs were basically very large and heavy animals. Although there were also smaller species, it is thought that the average dinosaur weighed between 1 and 10 tons. The mammals of the time, on the other hand, weighed only 3 to 6 kilograms on average. So the difference between mammals and dinosaurs was about the same as the difference between me before and after the all-you-can-eat buffet at the Asian restaurant. And the knowledge we have today is primarily gained from the study of fossils, fossilized bones that are examined by paleontologists. However, there are not only fossilized bones, but also so-called soft tissue fossils. In 1998, for example, this fossil was found in Italy, which shows impressions of the windpipe and intestines of a dinosaur. And I even sell fossilized dinosaur droppings in my online shop. No joke. You can see the stuff here. What can I say? I'm just an expert at making money with shit. From these fossils, scientists are now trying to piece together our picture of the dinosaurs. There is a large consensus that the mass extinction of most dinosaur species was initiated by the impact of a large meteorite. This kicked up huge amounts of dust. The atmosphere darkened, it became cooler, many plants died, the herbivores no longer had enough to eat, and then eventually the carnivores starved to death too. The rough theory summarized briefly. The most likely impact site is the so-called Chicculub Crater in Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula. The size of the crater can also be used to deduce the size of the impacting object. This leads to the conclusion that the meteoroid must have been around 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter. But I can already hear some of you asking nervously, When are we finally going to get to the bones on the moon? My dino chicken nuggets are almost gone. One thing at a time, people. Normally, there is always an interaction between meteors that crash into the Earth and the Earth's atmosphere. Due to their speed, meteors rub against the Earth's atmosphere, and in the vast majority of cases, they burn up in the process. Thank goodness, because around 100 tons of meteorite material fall to Earth every day. But with a meteorite as large as the Chicxulub meteor, there was simply no such burn-up process. Geophysicist Mario Reboledo says, the meteor was so massive that it simply pushed away the Earth's atmosphere and exerted such incredible pressure that the ocean in front of it simply disappeared. So we have to imagine that this gigantic meteorite crashed into the Earth, crushing the atmosphere in the process. And in this atmospheric hole, an incredible amount of material could be hurled into space. Most of it fell back to Earth, but not all of it. An object that wants to move away from Earth permanently has to overcome the gravitational pull of our planet. The speed required for this is known as escape velocity. Depending on how strong the gravity of the celestial body you are on is, the higher the escape velocity must be in order to overcome the respective gravitational force force. On Earth, the escape velocity is at least 11.2 kilometers per second. In the case of the apocalyptic Chicxulub impact, it is purely mathematical that the ejected material from the Earth 
far exceeded this escape velocity and was pulled out into the cosmos by the atmospheric impression bubble, as I call it now. And what was hurled into the cosmos? Plant material, dust, rock, but very probably also dinosaurs. The material was hurled out into space at a speed of at least 11.2 kilometers per second, and some of it certainly reached the moon and even Mars. I admit that this sounds very strange, and some of you will certainly be saying, no way, man, I don't believe a word you say. Science journalist Peter Brennan wrote about these theories in his 2017 book, The End of the World. In it, there's an interview with Mario Rebelledo, the geophysicist from just now, in which Brennan asks, so there are probably small pieces of dinosaur bones on the moon. And Rebelledo replies, yes, very likely. And it's not as bizarre as it sounds, because similar things happen all the time. And here's proof. We've already found numerous Martian meteorites on Earth, stones that were detached by an impact on Mars and hit the Earth. This is proof that even small impacts on Mars can cause material to leave Mars with sufficient escape velocity and hit the Earth. There are also several lunar meteorites on Earth, lunar rocks, that have impacted here. So now imagine again what this gigantic impact, which ultimately caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, must have hurled unimaginable amounts of material into space. This makes it very likely that some of it ended up on the moon and even on Mars. This means that if we discover organic bone material from dinosaurs on the moon or Mars at some point, this is not yet proof of alien dinosaurs. So you shouldn't immediately slip into the next conspiracy telegram group. If the Earth is flat, then why, if you keep going straight, you come back to where you are? You can't use arguments that prove me wrong. It would then only be proof that the material exceeded escape velocity and was hurled away onto these celestial bodies. Realistically, however, it has to be said that the material was completely pulverized during the impact, so unfortunately there are no whole bones lying around. But if you take this a little further, it is also an interesting indication of the theory of panspermia. This theory states that life can spread through space, from celestial body to celestial body, and that perhaps even life on Earth originally came from space. If organic material can travel from Earth to the Moon, or even to Mars and vice versa, which has been proven, then theoretically organic material from somewhere else could have traveled from space to Earth. The so-called tardigrades, tardigrada, are known from Earth, for example, small creatures that can survive almost anything, and some of which were even shot to the Moon on board an Israeli probe. Unfortunately, the probe crashed and was destroyed on landing, but it is possible that the tardigrades survived. As absurd as it sounds, tardigrades probably exist on the moon. Lying dormant in cryptobiosis, perhaps right next to pulverized dinosaur bones, let someone else say that science is boring. By the way, as always, please subscribe to the channel because I know that many of you are watching but have not yet subscribed. I would be delighted if you could change that so that the channel gets even more coverage. Thanks, guys. Also be sure to check out the next video shown on the channel. I'm sure you'll be just as blown away. Also feel free to visit the online shop. Every purchase here helps me to keep the channel running. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.